Welcome back, Life Sciences. I hope you had a good break. Just get those muscles stretched, the blood going, and the oxygen coming in. Right, last segment, we looked at this whole concept of what gases exchange is, how we get oxygen in and carbon dioxide out. The next section we're going to look at is this concept of homeostasis. Now, if I, there's a few um, terms on the board here. Homeostasis has come up a lot in the sections that you have looked at. And even in the last section that I looked at, I spoke about the pH. There's this homeostasis is this constant balance. And that's why I've put the diagram up of a scale here. Is gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide, must be in balance in our body, right? We can't have too much of one or the other. Now, what happens is this, when my body gets too much carbon dioxide, and this is a concept that you must understand, it's not about the oxygen levels, okay? It's not about the oxygen levels. I'm getting the oxygen in. This is about what happens when my carbon dioxide levels right, are too high. Now my body needs to make that plan, the balance. Look, here's my scale. My carbon dioxide is here. I need to bring my carbon dioxide levels down. Yes, I am going to use oxygen as a means, but I'm not, it's not about the oxygen. Okay, that's really important. It's about the carbon dioxide. So when we look at it, remember, as I said, homeostasis is this whole thing about stability. I need to keep certain things stable. Now I'm going to draw this little diagram on the board here and we're going to go and work through this. And that's why I've put carbon dioxide at the top there, is that I want you to understand that it's a carbon dioxide that's going to bring about this action, not oxygen. Okay, so before I start, picture this. You guys have playing soccer or you've gone for a run or you've played netball or you've played rugby, whatever. What happens afterwards, okay? I need, so I've done all this oxygen. So what happens is I'm exercising and my body needs the energy. So what, what increases? So cellular respiration increases. So I need this energy and what does an increase in cellular re respiration mean? It means there's an increase in carbon dioxide. And as I said to you, carbon dioxide changes the pH of the this body. I cannot have it, right? That could be detrimental to the balances. So what do I do? My body needs to have something in place. So what happens when these high carbon dioxide levels are in my blood? Blood rushes through the brain, specifically an area called the medulla oblongata. Right? And what it is, if we look at it, it's the brain stem. It's the very bottom part of my brain. And what the medulla oblongata does is it sends two messages. So it's got a nerve and it's two organs that it's going to trigger. The first organ, it says, it goes to the heart. All right? It goes to the heart and it says to the heart, you need to beat faster. Right, so why would I need to beat faster? Very simply, guys, what am I going to get in? I'm going to get oxygen into my body quicker, and what am I going to get out? I want to get the carbon dioxide to my lungs quicker. So the heart must beat fast. I'm sure you guys, after you've had a lot of exercise, why is my heart beating? Right, my heart is beating to get my carbon dioxide levels down. The second organ it sends it to is my lungs. All right, here's my lungs. There we go, the trachea. Right, and what does it say to the lungs? It says you must breathe in deeper. <gasps> Big breath, sorry, let me go there. Deeper, and you must breathe in more often. So if I breathe in deeper and I breathe in more often, what am I doing? I'm increasing my oxygen and I'm getting my carbon dioxide out faster. So when my heart starts to beat faster and when my lungs start to work, right? So what happens after I'm exercising, my heart is going, that's getting oxygen to there, all right? It's getting the carbon dioxide back to the lungs. 
I'm breathing in deeper, all right? I'm bringing in more oxygen. I'm breathing more out more carbon dioxide and I'm breathing a few more times again, getting more oxygen in, but most importantly, getting more carbon dioxide out. Then after a while, what happens? When the levels equalize, when my carbon dioxide gets back to normal, what happens to my breathing? Right? My breathing gets back to normal. And what happens to my heart rate? My heart rate gets back to normal. I'm sure you can remember very often, sometimes when you train, some of you might train using your heart rate, seeing how it works. And that's how my body, all right, homeostasis, that is how my body is going to make sure, right, that I get rid of the carbon dioxide, not the oxygen. Another concept here, I don't know if you've ever tried, I don't know if it's all about the Kenyan athletes use it as well. A lot of the long distance athletes train very high up in the mountain. And the reason is, is that the higher you go, there's less oxygen. So your body makes a plan. It actually produces a hormone that goes to your bones and it says, produce more red blood cells. Do right, you see this guy is climbing the mountain or whatever? So as soon as I go high up and my body doesn't have, right, there's not enough oxygen available, as you will see over here, my body makes a plan, homeostasis. This is when oxygen is not available. And I make the pro and the hormone makes more enzymes, right? More, not more enzymes, more red blood cells. And those red blood cells, I can bring in oxygen more. You'll see very often when sports teams come and they have to, they train high up at high altitudes, which makes them fitter if they want to go and train at lower altitudes. So what is this? This is gaseous exchange. My body shortage of oxygen, my body makes a plan in order for that to be encompassed. I have an essay type question on the board here, but we don't, I know you don't do essays, but I just want you to realize that when it comes to this, the homeostasis, there's the chance that you could have a long question. Mm -hmm.